Hi everybody, my name is Roger Richards and I'm the facilitator of spiritualonline.org. You are about to enjoy a fantastic session, and I mean that most sincerely, from one of our members, Ash, who is going to share his amazing depth of experience, knowledge, and his research on astral projection and astral travel. And what I have done, I've, I've edited this video, so I put the information at the start of it, so you don't have to sit and wait. But then I put the meditative preparation towards the back and then the actual experiences that we enjoyed um, from this session as well. So please like and subscribe and share this one with your friends. It's a beauty. Okay, see you soon. Astral Travelling is where we're going to be going today and we've got our special guest Ash who's very conversant and very experienced at this practice who's going to be sharing with us. Uh, very very shortly so welcome along ash and um it's really great that you can offer your time and um share your experiences with us and this is one of those topics which is a little bit elusive for many people to experience consciously they were aware of it um so maybe ash um when did you first become aware of astral traveling um what was your first kind of experience of this and um, we'll just have a bit of a conversation to begin with I guess and have some chance for some questions eventually yeah sure um, thank you thank you by the way for inviting me hello everybody um, when was the first time that I had astro projection well that's inter that's interesting because the first time that I had astro projection was in 2003 and it was by pure accident i didn't even know what astral projection was um, and before that i wasn't too spiritual um basically i was just lying down on my bed um early in the morning around five o'clock in the morning listening to an ebook and, and then all of a sudden i just felt a huge vibration rush throughout my body and just like that i left my body nothing nothing sophisticated nothing incredible just like that the vibration left my body automatically and then i was floating over my body in pure ecstasy it felt so good i thought i was dead um it felt good though. i didn't want to go back um it felt love um but i was stuck on my body from my feet um for some reason yeah now that was that is something that happens a lot when you ask to project is that you have some of your limbs that are still stuck in your body um, and there's many modalities in order to help you disconnect from your body. Like if I would have known what I know today, I would have simply created a new pair of feet. <laughs> and that's, that's how I would have simply disconnected from my body. But I didn't know what was happening back then. I was just floating over my body with my feet stuck in my, in my physical feet, my energetic feet stuck in my physical feet. Um, and then I just went back into my body and then it happened like three, four times in a row. Kind of, in a way to convince me that I, that wasn't a dream. That's really what's happening. And, and that kind of started my spiritual, uh, my spiritual journey. Um, Cause it was at that moment that I realized that was not my physical body, that I was a, an energetic body. I was this other being that was inside of that vehicle. So it just got me really curious about um, the origins of that new self that I've just, I've just discovered. Uh, where does it come from where is it going and the whole concept of death just evaporated i didn't believe in death anymore because i just realized that the physical body is just a vehicle holding what i've experienced which seemed truer to me or uh, as a greater reality than what i was experiencing back then so i didn't know much about these topics so i kind of jumped into the first thing um out there which was monotheism and, uh, and uh, religious monotheism and I practiced religion um, for about 15 years until 2003. And what's interesting 2003 is that I discovered meditation. Why I'm saying that's interesting because throughout my whole, uh, the whole 15 years that I was practicing religion, um, one thing that it taught me a lot is prayer, how to pray. And when I say prayer is not prayer to get something, but it's prayer of gratitude. Mm -hmm. uh, when you want something be grateful about it be grateful about all the blessings that are always all around you so when you pray it's, it's really a prayer of gratitude and when i say prayer of gratitude well gratitude is an emotion therefore when you pray you have to attach emotions if not it's just daydreaming and it just mm -hmm. doesn't work and the fact that you pray in gratitude that and then you attach emotions of gratitude that becomes like an order to the universe 
um, and that's how manifestation been happening. Um, but I mean, it's like anything in the universe, right? There's every truth has two sides. Every, a coin has two sides. There's a male, the fem and the feminine, uh, the positive, the negative. It's a duality. So basically, the opposite of prayer is meditation. Why? Because prayer is something that you do actively, right? And meditation is something you do passively. Okay, so prayer is talking to the universe and meditation is listening to the universe and it's talking back to you. So, and that was a missing part <laughs> that I didn't have for those 15 years mm -hmm. that I didn't meditate. Right. I was always talking and talking and talking, grateful. So a lot of things would happen. I, I would get a lot of things manifested in my life, but I wasn't listening. It's like a two-way conversation. So at that point, I decided to meditate and that's when basically I shut up, right? It's it's a two-way conversation, right? Mm -hmm. So I stopped talking. In other words, I stopped talking to the universe. And I started listening. And this is when um, I've had a profound spiritual experience that night. Mm -hmm. And ever since that single night, uh, my clairs have been active. I've been a lot of diff a lot of different um, spiritual abilities have appeared that exact night until today. So it's been four years now. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I dived into that. Well, I was curious about astral projection, and I reminded it reminded me of what happened 15 years ago. So I started doing research on what astral projection was, and it's pretty interesting because what I found is all mechanics. Um, w when you really dive into the mechanics of astral projection, you realize that that's something that's normal. We all have to project every single day. Whether uh, when you meditate, you can astral project. When you're dreaming, you're astral projecting. And some people can astral project on demand, like just like that. You're walking around and they just leave their bodies. So anybody can do it. And that's something that's completely normal. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that we're not conscious of it, right? And as a matter of fact, right now, each one of you is probably astral projecting somewhere else right now. You're bilocating somewhere else right now, but your consciousness is focused on where you are right now with me. So it's all about understanding how to shift your focus from one body to another body. So the, so the idea of astral projection is basically how you can consciously put your mind in a, in a trance-like state while maintaining your faculties. Okay, I'm gonna repeat yeah. that. You're consciously putting your mind in a trance-like state or maintaining your faculties. So the fact that you're maintaining your faculties is going to send a message to your body saying that he's sleeping, right? Because the body and the mind are two separate things and they always communicate with, with each other. So the, the body wants to know if the mind is sleeping so that it shuts down so that you ask or project, okay? If the, bo if the body knows that the mind is awake, it's not going to ask or it's not going to shut down. Mm -hmm. So you need to some kind of trick the body, right? Um, so, so the idea is uh, when you do that, um, what's going to happen is the body is going to create some hormones, and it can allow it will allow you to disconnect hormones such as the uh, DMT, for example, right? Which, which is created by the pineal gland, or even the lungs can create DMT. And once you astral project, I mean, there's different places and different vehicles that you can take. Because as much as right now we have a physical vehicle, um, when you leave your body, you're not literally leaving your body because you're still in your body. So technically what you're doing is that you're creating an energetic double of your body. Okay. And that's very important because a lot of people think that they're just leaving their body and they and that's it and then they get scared maybe somebody's going to take over my body or something's going to happen or I'm going to die or no you're still in your body your consciousness is still in your body but you just created an energetic body and you're switching your focus from this consciousness to that consciousness into that energetic body hmm. and then from that energetic body you can travel in different um, dimensions or you don't even have to create an energetic body and you just become everything. So this is another experience that you can have. So once you pro project out of your body, you do not need another energetic body, which is physical to certain extents, less physical than this body, but an energetic body is considered physical to certain extents. But you can also project outside, and this is when you become everything. And you can also have these sorts of experience, and these are pretty fascinating. Um, I had them a couple of times, and 
the first time I had these experiences, I was like a ping pong ball <laughs> going from one reality to another and going all over the place because you're not physical, you're disembodied. So everything you look at, you just become it because you are it. So you can't go somewhere, you are everything. So you just start becoming a ping pong ball trying to understand what's going on, right? So it's pretty fascinating when you have this kind of experience of being disembodied, okay? But um, an easier experience is obviously by having a, a body, which is an energetic body. And then once you have an energetic body, you can go all sorts of places. I mean, you can visit this dimension. Um, you can visit the astral realms. You can visit the afterlifes where you have people that passed away, um, and you can visit other dimensions. I don't really, I don't, I, I don't really like the word dimension because there's a, it, it's very linear and it's very geometrical. Um, yeah. You know, like first dimension, second, third, fourth. Like I see them more as uh, perspectives um, because it's not like as if the third dimension and then you go to a higher dimension because the fourth dimension is not higher than the third dimension. It's not better. If anything, you got beings in the fifth dimension looking at us and they're looking at us in awe, right? So who's higher and who's lower, right? So the whole idea of di dimensions, I usually replace it by perspectives because all dimensions or perspective, they're basically here and now, right here. Mm. All dimensions are right here. Sorry, you can say something? Yeah, I look at, yeah, a couple of things. Um, let, let's just go back a little bit to the, the idea of creating an energetic body to travel, um, would you say that that aspect of us is actually already there? It's just really just waking it up rather than trying to create an image? That, that's a good question because most of the times that I ask to project, um, I kind of tend to automatically go in different places. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I jump into that body. So yeah, maybe it's always there. Okay. I don't have all the answers to the questions, right? All right. But I get always there because I. it's like as if I'm building a body, then I'm going inside. I'm. It's like as if as soon as I, I do all the triggers in order to disconnect from my body, it's like as there's a uh, an agenda. Okay, Ash, today, mm -hmm. this is what you're experiencing. So now you're going to get this kind of body because one of the things that I like doing is once I'm in a body and I'm in my room, for example, I go in front of the mirror to see what I look like. <laughs> and sometimes I look like me but sometimes I look like a mist. Ash, it seems like you've got a big wardrobe in the etheric world here that you can you can wear a certain vibration of energy, a different different suit or a different body at will. You can select yes. it. You know, yes. it's like and I do feel that too. Which is an interesting thing because there's a um, Rudolf Steiner touched on this, who was a great clairvoyant and he said there's certain initiates who are waiting to come back into this world to incarnate but they can't find the right etheric body that is ready for them so it's like you've got a, a number of these all lined up in your personal cache and away you go it's, yeah. i find it fascinating i find it's terrific yeah no, it's, pre it's pretty interesting but what, what's really interesting is the different types of projections also because sometimes i just leave my body and i'm appearing over it but sometimes I, I'm literally, it's, I'm literally invited to a specific coordinate in time and space. So it's an invitation. So instead of having a, a normal astral projection where you would just leave your body, mm -hmm. it's a controlled astral projection where you're being invited by beings to bring you to a specific place to see something or experience yeah. something or feel something. Uh, and, and these are portals, basically. So it's a, literally a portal um, that would appear over me mm -hmm. and it would suck me in and then i would just be traveling through space and time i'd literally see stars and planets and universe and throughout the universe and until i arrived to a certain destination and then i would either meet a being or see a planet or see another civilization and usually it doesn't last long mm -hmm. um but then and then i'd go back home but most of the times i lose connection because i always get so excited <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, but sorry. Well, just in you sharing this with us, it's like a gift to us as well. You know, they opened up doorways and portals, and that in itself is 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 very much part of the purpose of why you're experiencing these things. But do you have a sense of intent when you are taken to a certain coordinate? Do you do you, do you, do you sort of know why you'd be taken there and brought back, or you just just go with the flow of it? 
I go with the flow. Um, I mean, obviously, I do get some messages. I do meet some beings. I do see some 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 civilizations. I've seen some planets, some interesting planets with some structures on it. Um, I have no idea what they are. Why am I being shown these things? Um, but I don't have all the pieces of the puzzle. So I'm yeah. just kind of being shown like a tourist guide. Okay, let's show you this. Let's show you that. Let's show you this. Um, but it kind of gets me confused. The more I have these experiences, the more like I, I realize I don't know much and there's so much out there going on. Um, yeah, I'd love to really understand like why am I having all these experiences, but they're just fascinating. And every time is different. Like sometimes I, I, one of the dimension that I go a lot to is the sixth dimension, the sixth perspective. And that dimension is, is molecular, molecular. It's, 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 um, it's at the, the basics of creation. They say like the alchemists of creation reside there where all the physical universe is created over there. And wh whenever I'm in this dimension, it's, it's purely, ge ge you see geometry all over because yeah. geometry is the foundation of, of, of physical matter. So I would see geometry and fractals all over that dimension. And it's extremely incredible. And it's, it's molecular, it's very tiny. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's interesting because it made me think about, you know, the declassified document recently by the, DI by the CIA that talks about how we live in a holographic universe that's based on fractals, right? And that dimension, which is the dimension where the alchemists of creation are, reside there, mm -hmm. it's purely fractals and purely geometry. It's extremely fascinating. Um, yeah. Mm. Okay. We might just um, throw it open for any questions or any comments from anyone before we go forward any any thoughts anyone i have um something i would like to share yeah sure um, i am a, a rosicrucian and we study um different aspects of spirituality and um for lack of a better term uh, how to flex your spiritual muscle as we move through the degrees and and it's interesting and one of the reasons i wanted to be here is because i'm now at the degree where we actually study astral travel and they teach you techniques on how to do it and i thought it was pretty interesting how ash spoke about having um an energetic body because one of the beliefs that um rosicrucians share is that we have a physical body and an energetic body. Both of those exist simultaneously. And um, that we use this energetic body to do the work, like Ash was saying. And one of the most interesting aspects to me about that was like, if you talk to somebody who's had like a limb amputated and afterwards they indicate that like they can still feel uh, that limb. I know I've had that personal experience with somebody close to me who, who lost her leg. And, you know, after having the leg removed for months after she's like, I could still, it's like, my leg is still there. It aches sometimes, but I'm looking down and my leg is gone. Um, so that really helped me to sink into, um, having that energetic body. I mean, and as an energy worker and somebody who studies energy, I'm aware of that anyway, but to hear that perspective, from somebody who doesn't have any background in that, doesn't have any belief in that, but yet still could feel something that she no longer physically possesses, really it sunk into me when I was reading through this degree about, um, about that very concept of having this energetic body. And I really liked uh, the way that Ash described, I never thought about uh, or like Roger said about having like a closet full of energetic bodies that you could you could work with. But um, I know for me, I've astral projected uh, starting when I was a teenager and I thought it was also quite fun. Um, I would float up out of my body and then I would float around the town that I grew up in and I could go to different places. And hmm. um, I remember one time in the middle of a projection, my mom actually came into the room and it freaked me out and I like slammed back into my body. Um, and that brought a little bit of fear because then I realized I really was out of my body. And, you know, then you hear this stuff about like leaving your body and somebody like taking it over you know you get into the fear stuff uh so i i kind of um stopped doing it uh as a teenager but have also 
you know, done it. And like he said, we all do it. We all do it in our dreams. Um, I know that I, I like to do it out in nature. I like to go out into nature and then tap in and then just let my consciousness flow. I ask for information and I'm taken to places. Like I know with COVID, that was my, like, where did this come from? You know, what, what can, what can you show me outside of my, myself and my own, you know? And so I, I have my own understanding of it, but Ash, I, um, Really appreciate you coming to share this knowledge and uh, just to let you know that um, people here share that with you. And uh, and I'm looking forward to what you're going to guide us through today. So thank you. Okay. Some, cool. Something that's an interesting concept, and this is part of the importance of what we actually do on here every, every week. Now, if you say, okay, we've got our physical body, but we've also got a thing called an etheric body, which is like, the closest energy body to the physical and it is a little bit like a car it's like we've got to jump in this etheric car to get into our physical body and our etheric bodies are being encoded and changed and conditioned constantly and if you think about particularly the young people who are coming onto our planet now what's happening to their etheric bodies with multimedia and in the um, school teacher and the disconnect of human beings and children from the spiritual and natural worlds in education what that is doing to our etheric bodies and potentially if it wasn't for people who are doing this kind of work that we are doing in a century's time how many etheric bodies would there be available energy bodies would there be available for people to come to earth and do this spiritual work so thank heavens for all the monks in central asia and southeast asia and the other people who are dedicating themselves to to say prayer or meditation or spiritual practice or we'd be in a bit of trouble you know really so i just wanted to throw that out there so the work that we're doing through meditation and through devo um, devotion a little video on devotion that touches in what ash mentioned before about prayer and the power of it and how that is a powerful force so i would say ash that your energy body has been well prepared through um through your um, practice and prayer prayerfulness before coming to this point and that was probably a little attribute together with whatever else you've brought into this world for you to share this with us so thank you <laughs> thank you it's a pleasure it's a pleasure yeah i like what you said earlier in terms of how the mind was creating that limb and you were and that person was literally feeling that limb right at the end of the day the as as they say in the the Kabbalion, the all is mind, right? Number one uh, law of the universe is the, the all is mind. So that's all there is. I mean, nothing really matters, literally. There's no matter. Everything is just energy vibrating at oscillating at various frequencies. So yeah, I can definitely see how the mind can project an extra leg and you can feel it because the all is mind. Hmm. Just, just with your experience, Ash, is it uh, like... Um a couple of very basic kinds of visualizations or exercises that that we could try just to you know take that next little step or do you find it doesn't work quite like that <laughs> <laughs> well see my personality i'm a very pragmatic person i'm a very technical person mm -hmm. like i've never been um, a person that just wishes for things and have a big imagination and I've, I've been very curious and that's what I that's how I've been able to um advance my 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 practice I've been doing, doing hundreds of astro projections but through a technical way so if there, if anything that I can give you guys my like my what I'm good at doing is really explaining you how to astro project from a technical standpoint um, how to set up the space, how the system works. And at the end of the day, we are in a physical body. So you need to work with that physical body. So how does that physical body functions, the hormones, how can you set up the best environment so that these things happen? Because you could, you do not do them, they happen to you. The yeah. problem is that so many people, they try to do these kind of things, but you cannot do them. It's like, for example, I would tell you, go to sleep, right? Yeah. But how do I do it? Go to sleep. You know, like you're talking to your kids, go to sleep, but I can't sleep. Go to sleep. You, they can't do it because sleeping is not something you do. Sleeping is something that happens to you. And the second that you let go, you fall asleep, right? 
So it's the same thing in meditation. The second you let go, you're going to have a mystical experience. But if you're trying to block all the sounds and this and that, it's not going to happen, mm -hmm. right? Same thing, you're watching a movie, but people fall asleep. Despite the fact that while watching the movie, there's so much noise, but they fall asleep. Why? Because they just zoned out and they were able to fall asleep. They just let go. But if they're fighting the noise of the movie, you're never going to sleep. So it's all about measuring the passive and the active approach to this um, science, if I want to say, because it is science in the sense where spirituality is just unknown science. For me, it's just science. And when you understand quantum physics, that's really basically the bridge between um, science and spirituality. But so if there's something that I can offer you guys is really I can go technical into the, the process, the modality, the understanding of the structure, the mechanics behind astral projection. Um, I think you're way better than me in meditation and guiding people <laughs> into meditation. Okay. Um, and look, oh, and having said that, Ash, too, one of the things that I happens on here every almost every week is that um myself or someone else may guide us into a meditation or into a very light trance state and i'll bring through a discourse or channel through a message or a, a visualization and when we debrief afterwards people say well look i never actually really heard any of that i was went off somewhere i don't know where it was and um so what we have we often find that i we're preparing the space here there's sort of a, a, a core trunk that you can sort of hang on to, but then people just go out. But it's a differing levels of ability to remember and bring back where mm. you've been or, or what happened to you. I find I'm getting a lot better at that now. But initially, you just think, oh, I just fell asleep, which it isn't sleep. It's something else. And people just can't quite remember. And this comes back to your energy body, your etheric body being malleable enough to go out there because the etheric body is the water body, body that holds memory, cosmic memory, and for you to then take it out, bring it back, wake it up in your 3D consciousness. So, yeah. um, so that's reassuring to hear that, Ash, too, is that we're sort of doing it without quite knowing it sometimes. Well, I do understand the, the, the strength of meditation. Why? Because energy um, is something that you can build. Um, it's something that you can build but something that you can also lose <laughs> so right. it, it takes focus it takes um certain um uh guidance if you want to say so if if it, it's really good to be guided in the meditation but you just gotta it's like riding a bicycle right mm -hmm. um you're gonna lose you're gonna lose the uh you're gonna fall down in the beginning and that's how in terms of building up energy now me what i do is what before astral projecting um i tend to focus simply on moving an energy ball within my body and that's basically as simple as that you know like i, I don't try to do all sorts of projections my my sole focus is imagining an energy ball inside of my body and then that energy ball would go outside of my body mm -hmm. and then that energy ball once it's outside of my body i would see an etheric body forming right on top of me and then I would project my consciousness from my from my, my my focus of my consciousness from my physical body, and I would project the focus on that new body that I created. Like this is a kind of meditation yeah. that I do sometimes, but besides that, all the other types that I ask or project, usually I I apply protocols to trick my body, so that my body thinks that my mind is sleeping, but in reality I'm not sleeping. So therefore, I enter into a paralysis that triggers a disconnection. Hmm. Okay, that, that all resonates. Um, any more any more questions? And we will go somewhere in a sec. Um, Ash, I've got a question here. Uh, my my mom, she does a lot of astral traveling and she does it. She says it just happens. She lies down and she just travels everywhere. And uh, but it's been an incident that she said um, she freaked out a little because she went out of her body and she couldn't come back. Um, and she felt like uh, she actually struggled to come back. Um, so, um, yeah, so is it something that we have to be guarded or when we do it um, that we might not <laughs> make it back? Okay. So there's not, first of all, there's nothing to fear. Okay. Um, um, there's absolutely nothing to fear. So it's all about, again, understanding the mechanics. Now, what happens is that when your physical body, which is your anchor, 
right? When your physical body um, prepares, thinks that your mind is sleeping, so it shuts down, it goes into a paralysis, a sleep paralysis. A lot of people have these things, sleep paralysis. Once it's in a sleep paralysis, it creates a disconnect, then you project. But meanwhile, your body is paralyzed. Why? Because it doesn't want you to move and hit somebody in the bed because you're dreaming or, right? So that's why it enters into paralysis. Now, you do not control that paralysis except for one thing, maybe more, but one thing specific, which is what? Your breath, the speed of your breath. So when these sort of things happen, all you have to do is change the speed of your breath. And then your physical body is, is going to say, oh, he's awake. Yeah. He's not sleeping anymore. So then the paralysis is going to shut off and you're going to go back into your body. Oh, okay. So change the speed of the breath. Yeah. But do you use your mother? Your mother's still aware of her physical body. Yeah, technically yeah. She's still aware of her physical body because she doesn't. She didn't leave it. She projected her focus on that energetic body. Now the fact that she's still aware of her physical body, she could change the speed of her breath by changing that. Automatically, it's going to suck you back in. So when you change it, do you go higher or do you go lower or how do you change the or just change it? Whatever you feel like it. If you want to go slower. Usually I go deeper breath. <sighs> I go like deeper, longer breaths. And then it, all, it, all it needs is a change, is a change, mm. but a conscious, active change. Mm. Uh, and then your body's going to cancel the paralysis. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it's funny that you mentioned about sleep paralysis and all that, because I noticed that a lot of young kids have that. Uh, my daughter, um she's 21 and she um she actually taught me about a sleep paralysis before i actually uh knew about it like i knew that there was some sort of change of vibrational happening but she said mom that's actually called a sleep paralysis and kids actually go through a lot and this a lot of things in tiktok as well about sleep paralysis um so it's it's happening more in young kids i think for yeah. some reason yeah but there, I mean, there's a fear connotation to sleep paralysis. When people talk about that, there's fear. Why? Because it's the unknown. They don't understand the mechanics, why the body's doing what it's doing. Sometimes it's after a dream, you wake up in the morning and you feel like you're paralyzed. So you get scared. And then you have all sorts of images online with monsters over you. And yeah, there's yeah, a yeah, lot yeah. of fear connotation, but there's nothing to fear. It's purely, um, it, it's, it's just normal in your physical body. It's uh, um, that's what the body does. It's a protective system so that you do not move and hurt yourself while sleeping. That's all. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. So it's a good news. So a lot of people, like I said, I mean, it's, it's something negative. They're scared of it. But once, if you're passionate about astral projection, you're, that's what you want. You want sleep paralysis because it's stage. Hmm. It's, it's the stage before disconnecting. Hmm. That's, it's interesting because normally when we go somewhere in the session, when we come back, I normally ask people to be aware of their breath and and sometimes do we even breathe ourselves back in to our body, which it's not a specific way of breathing, but it's just an awareness again of breath to, to wake, wake ourselves back up. Now, there was a question from Anthony in the chat. Can you share how do you trick your body? And um, what are the triggers you're talking about? Now, he's also mentioned the Monroe Institute techniques, which I've never heard of. I'm not sure if you're familiar with those, but if, if yourself or Anthony can just let us know what that, that is, it'd be helpful. But Anthony, uh, yeah, just going back to you, Ash, um, how do you trick your body? I, I thought you'd covered it, but let's just reiterate. Trick no, I mean, well, I, I, I can give you other tricks for it. Okay, so a very, very simple example. Um, once you, let's say you, you lie down on, a, on your bed, on your back. Um, obviously, there's there's timing for that, but I, we, I can talk about it later. But let's say you're lying down on your back and you're not moving in the middle of the night and you're not moving. It's an uncomfortable position. So the idea is to go inside of an uncomfortable position and lie down and stop moving. So what's going to happen is that since your body is disconnected from your mind, your body is going to attempt to connect with your mind by sending, sending you a scratch signal. So you're going to feel like scratching your head, your head or your arm. Resist it. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, it's going to hurt more and more and more and always resist it. And at some point, you're going to feel a rollover um, um, temptation. 
So your body's going to want you to roll over because it's not comfortable always being on your back and not moving. Um, at, now, if you're able to resist all, all these triggers, um, your body's going to think that your mind is falling asleep. And this is when uh, paralysis is triggered. Literally, you're going to feel a wave going from your feet all the way to your to your head and that's the paralysis so that's one way of tricking the body is by putting yourself in these uncomfortable positions and not scratching yourself the other preparation here as well is the concentration exercise that we we do and it is to screen out and put yourself in a position where you're not being pulled by these impulses either so um something a bit of an underlying technique um anthony are, are you able to click on just for a sec on your microphone, Anthony, and maybe just um, a couple of words about um, the Monroe, Monroe technique. Yeah, sure. Can you hear me well? Yeah, and loud and clear. All right. So the Monroe Institute was uh, was a really famous institute. They have now an uh, institution in a lot of countries. They um, basically elaborate the technique to provoke those astral projections. Um, they, they are called out-of-body experiences. If you just Google Mono Institute, you will find a ton of tapes you can listen to. Mm -hmm. Basically what they are, uh, these are emi-sync uh, tones. So for hemisphere uh, synchronization tones. So basically your both your uh, ears are hearing two different tones. Uh, and what it does is that it creates it's creating waves in your brain. If you listen to just the right ear, you just hear one tone, the left ear another one. But when you listen to both, you start hearing a wave. And that waves um, just helps you to uh, put your body, put your mind into a different, uh, an altered um, mind state. And with this simple technique, Monroe was able to provoke with anybody in his, inside this lab an out-of-body experience. And I know that the American government was using it to, um, to help um, like spying. Um, and Monroe, when he died, he had like a military uh, um, you know, ceremony because for all this help he, he brought uh, for the military uh, researchers. And his techniques are still used, uh, used uh, today. Um, and you can find his tapes uh, online. Um, very, very interesting technique that everybody could try. Um, I tried myself multiple times. It's a really long process. It's a quite a long process. You really have to master each, uh, each step of the, 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 the guide to, to master it. But I haven't really, uh, I wasn't able to really go out of my body yet, but I just want to know, Ash, if you have heard of those techniques and if you would like to, to try um, these kind of things. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I've I've heard about the David Monroe and the um, the institute. Um, I did try the hemisync, and it is very powerful. It works um, every single time I take the hemisync. It's it's able to pull me uh, in an altered state. Um, not always projecting, because me most of the like my strength is projecting um, during the night at a very specific time during the night in the third part of the night. Um, but most of the times that I've tested the uh, Monroe Institute hemi-sync technology, it's always putting me in an altered state. So I've had some pretty interesting experiences um, during these altered states, but not an astral projection, but more like as a, um, interesting connections that I have created. But yeah, I definitely believe in the uh, in this program. It's actually a lot more sophisticated today than the hemi-sync. They have a lot more uh, tools and technologies today that are available if you go to their uh, to their institute to study there. Mm. Okay. Now, what am I doing? All right. Thank you very much for sharing. You're welcome. Okay. I might get everyone to close their eyes. Um, if you have any water in your body, have a sip of water first. And um, we'll go into a meditation, see what happens, Ash, and then we can chat a bit more um, when, we, when we finish that. So, I've got a very, very loose idea on how to start this, and I'm just going to go with the flow. And um, normally, a lot of the meditations we do on here, um, I just add a little bit. So 
we'll find out. I won't say a little bit, I normally bring it through from above. So, um, and the other thing that I do, Ash, this might be of interest to everyone as well, when we talked about um, part of the preparation for this is perhaps having some time in like a prayerful state. Normally before I do any kind of trance work or anything like what I'm about to do, um, I silently do the Lord's Prayer within myself as, as well. I don't normally do it out loud on, on this group because it polarizes a few people to start doing the Lord's Prayer, but each person may have their own little key um, to enter into that kind of um, state or connection with, um, with the divine. So we're closing our eyes and um, all right, starting off with the breath straight away, breath. So um, I'll just um, let's see what we'll do with our breath. Okay. I want you to breathe in through your nose. And we mentioned before about breathing in the light. So just do one breath only where you're drawing the light into the center of your head, holding it for a few seconds and then releasing. And normally your out breath is probably about twice as long as your in breath. So we've done one breath, drawing the light into our head and then out breath. And now we're going to do a breath where we're going to draw the light around the outside of our body. So we're drawing our breath in, but it is like illuminating the exterior part of our body. So the interior was a little bit like illuminating our pineal gland. And now we're illuminating perhaps um, our energetic etheric body. Now I want you to keep doing that, repeating that. So we still, your breathing is quite relaxed. And as you're breathing in, we imagine our, the film around the outside of your body, your etheric body, just illuminating it. Sort of, the etheric body is actually within your auric field. It's a bit tighter. It's like having a, an invisible wetsuit on, I guess. We're illuminating that. Now, once we're illuminating that, our breath will keep doing that, um, even when we're not thinking of it now. Um, now, be aware of your feet on the floor. Be aware, be aware of the weight of your bottom on your seat if you're sitting, or if you're lying in the, you, the, your back space on the bed. Be aware of the weight of your hands on your, on your thigh or in your lap, wherever they are. Now be aware of the weight of your shoulders and just relax, take all the tension out of your shoulders. And now just imagine and be aware of the balance of your head on your neck, on your shoulders, make sure that is also um, in alignment. So essentially your muscles are relaxed, your ligaments are relaxed, your, um, either if you're lying down, that's taking your full body weight, or if you're sitting up your skeletal system, which is sound asleep pretty much asleep, is holding the weight of your body. So the rest of you is relaxed. Now, some of you can now draw your attention. You're obviously aware of your physical body, where you are sitting or lying. Now, just take your attention to the periphery of it, particularly just in front of your chest, stomach area, and just you may sense some illumination there, like a part of it, your light body or your energetic body there. We just sort of, our mind or our attention, you're just drifting a little bit in that energy body, just in front of our physical body. Now we're also aware of, with our eyes closed, of the broader space around us in our room. And you may now imagine that that room is also becoming more illuminated. It is our sacred space. We did prepare this earlier. And your bubble of light in which your mind is, is just stretching, expanding a little bit across your room, beyond the portals of your chakra system. So we're just passing a little bit beyond the line of our chakras into another part of our physical room. And then come back through our chakras, back 
through the great gateways of our chakras back right close to the surface of our physical body. Just feel your body once again. Be very relaxed. Very still. And now the surface, the energy field just before your torso in particular. And also above your head, you can feel the space above your head. Now from above your head, just look at that space above your head. Now feel the space in front of your torso. Now shift back to above your head and now just stretch like you're stretching the top of your head over the top of your third eye chakra into the far side of your room. Like an like a elastic bungee cord, I guess. And then come back to the very top of your head. Let's go down to our torso again now, just in your heart area. Now let's imagine we're pushing that part of our heart force out through the doorways of our chakra field and across the other side of the room and back. Just taking a breath, just aware of the breath once more. Now you, we're aware of the space just in front of your torso once more. Some of you can sense the line of your chakras just beyond that. And now we're going to go just beyond that again into our sacred space, a little more deeply into the room. Now in the middle of your room where you now are, Imagine that your energy is intensifying, that you are drawing more of your energy into this spot, into your room. And in doing so, you're also drawing in more closely the vibrations of the wider universe. And it is just that your vibration is lifting that you are now merging more in to a cosmic place. You may sense yourself just becoming a little lighter and perhaps even floating up into this light space. If it goes dark, that's okay. You may pass through the darky, the dark starry realm. But some of you now may be entering what could be described as like a tunnel. You just feel yourself starting to get some momentum traveling through this tunnel, through this vortex. Just allow it to take you along. Allow it to take you along. Keep going. If you're not in the tunnel, listen to me. If you're not in the tunnel. Imagine your bubble around you of light is just expanding, expanding, expanding out into the higher world. And just let it drift out into the higher world like a bubble. And just allow it to keep taking you, knowing that you are connected. Now to take you up through the clouds, up through the atmosphere, and higher in terms of density above that. Some of you are still traveling. Some of you will come to a light filled place where you can just pause and observe and listen. If you've expanded up above Earth, just look back down, just pause, observe, take it in. You've gone further to a different point. Allow it to come to you. Don't think too hard about it. Just allow it to come to you. Don't want to use your cerebral mind. Just let your soul absorb the spiritual senses. Take it in. So 
some of you may ask, who is with you? Who is around you? Some of you have like just a mental conversation with who or what is around you. Let your imagination just do its thing or your intuition. Now your light body, every little point of your light body is like a receptor. And imagine that you are receiving these different parts of your receptor light body. It's like working with the clairs of your light body. Some of you, it is important to absorb the peace and the harmony of the place you're in and the warmth and the connection. For some of you, you're probably aware of the light, the higher light, and the higher densities that you could ascend to with your soul receptors more sensitively honed. Just push yourself up there without too much effort. Some of you may be in the creative space of our earthly kingdom. You just have awareness of colors, movement around you. I want you to turn your attention to way below you somewhere is another part of you that is sitting or lying. And from where you are, harness the energy around you and direct it back down to where you are sitting way below you. You can use your soul hands to transmit it down. So you are drawing celestial energy, directing it back to your physical body. Now we're going to send another beam of energy to us. And then we are going to travel along that beam of energy back to our physical body. So choose an aspect of love or strength or wisdom or illumination and send it to your body and travel back down through the light filled space and then perhaps through the dark filled space on that force back towards where your sacred space is on earth below. And just come into the sacred space of your room once more into the light filled space of your room. Keeping your eyes closed, can you perceive around your room with your soul senses? Can you sense the vibrations in your room, the energy in your room? Just with your soul senses where it is brighter, where it is dimmer, 
colors. Now your chakra field is somewhere between you and your physical body. I'd like you to imagine you're stepping back through your chakra field more closely to your physical body. And now you can almost feel the breath of your own body. You can sense the movement of your body breathing. See if you can enter in partially through your nose as you breathe in, partially through your throat as you breathe in, partially through your heart chakra area, partially through your solar plexus, partially through your sacral chakra, partially through your vital life force base chakra, and also the energy above your head. Just make sure it's pulled back to where your crown to where your crown is. You feel the light from the top of your head down through your body, integrated back into where you sit. Now imagine just using your breath that your breath is harmonizing and integrating all this vibration back where it should be. Just knows where to go if you ask. And now work the vibration right down through your body, down through your torso, down through your hips, down through your legs and feet. Feel the connection to earth under your feet. Feel it also running down through your arms, to your fingers and hands. And when you're ready, maybe one or two more breaths, just to feel your breath right through your body. One and deep. Imagine the breath going right down to your feet and the hands. And when you're ready, just wriggle your fingers and toes and bring yourself back into a waking state. Get a sip of water, take your time, open your eyes though. Be very gentle in your initial movements as you move. Okay, so when you're back, just um, except for Jan, just click your videos back on so I know everyone is safe and sound back in town and also um, welcoming any comments even if you got absolutely zero when you didn't imagine anything but um, oh Kerry's got the yawns she went somewhere um, who haven't you heard from okay um, Louis welcome along um, Louis did you were you able to get into the zone of that at all i know it's new to the group um yeah i got into a, a nice meditation i didn't really experience anything i've i've tried many many times without much success so i'm really interested in the pragmatic uh, mechanical approach so maybe at the end or so that we can get a little more into that okay that's cool that's good feedback um Let's see, Kerry, how are you going today? Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Um, I went to, I've been there before, um, the White Plains of Consciousness, um, which is a very, which is, <laughs> as it sounds, it's a, a completely white space, but I couldn't work out who I was supposed to have the conversation with. I just got the word there um when i when i went there so um yeah all right well i've got um you know there's 11 of us eleven or of us in the group so some of the things i say uh, might be relevant for one or two people and other things might be relevant for others so i'm trying yeah. to multitask <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but that was interesting ash because you mentioned before ash that we take on different energy bodies to go to different places. And I felt even then that I was potentially in a couple of different places working with different people. 
at the same time. That was part of that as well. Um, now, I know Roni goes to some interesting places every now and then. Did you go anywhere um, just before? Hi, Roger. Hi, everyone. Ash, thank you so much. This is awesome. I always seem to be in a bubble. I saw a little bit of everything. I was floating. I saw the stars. I saw faces. I always see a little bit of everything. And I even saw like a staircase with lots of people walking up. It was beautiful. Did, did you have any sense what that was about? Rani, or do you like, or do you have like a, a dialogue sort of, or if you think, does it bring you back into your waking state too much? I think if I think too much, it'll bring me back. Yeah. Like, I feel like lately I've been getting a lot of contact and I'm not sure what they're telling me. Like I'm hearing little things and they're here and there, but I'm slowly putting it together. I think I was sharing with Sherry like two weeks ago. I'm putting like all these little pieces together and I'm starting to get what they're trying to mm. say to me. But it doesn't hurt to have that conversation with them even after afterwards, like even now and say, hey, look, I got this, I got that, I couldn't quite get this bit. And so mm. they know where to work, how to work and where to work with you to open up mm. those aspects as well. I'm not sure how much they can see directly and how much feedback they need from us consciously to like to have a conscious dialogue with them. I, I think the conscious dialogue does help. I think it's mm -hmm. like an intention again that activates. Just theory, Ash, I'm just throwing it out there. Um, okay. Um, yeah, it's a little bit out of action today, so I, I won't Pick on and uh, Susanna, were you um, floating around in anywhere today? Uh, yeah, I it took me to a few. I was in the tunnel, I visualized the tunnel, and there was a little bit of pink in the tunnel. Um, I connected with the earth, the earth had a big star, um, and probably just part of it was a bit dark, but just saw it with a big star. And um, I did get a word. A couple of words was about truth um, and perception. So people's truth and perception is their own. It's not your truth. That's what I got. That's hmm. it's interesting because once you get out of the physical plane, what's the truth as well? You know, it's. Yeah. Many levels, yeah. Okay. Um, just checking with with Anthony. Um, Anthony, do you have you practiced this a little bit yourself? You know, astral traveling, or are you more just a student of it? How how did you go just before with this? Yeah, my experience is just based on the monoro tapes. I've been trying it. Uh like for a few months uh, without succeeding. But I think going with um, what Ash was talking about, putting your body in a discomfort uh, way, uh, position, I really can't wait to try that and, and see if we can find other pragmatic uh, methods like that. Because yeah, it's, to me, it's all about that. Um, uh, just the Mono Institute should help. I just didn't manage to to get to that point yet um, there's always something distracting i usually just fall asleep and yeah this is my my biggest uh, blocker yeah i'm sort of wondering too ash like you, we mentioned that oh, you mentioned you take like a technical pragmatic approach to it which you you can do i'm wondering yeah. if underneath that is quite the opposite through what you have developed and built up through maybe a more prayerful um, yeah. biography and the two are now working together in different ways. A hundred percent, because I mean, the, 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 the pragmatic approach, it's, it's technical, but then what it does is that it, 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 um, it builds your belief system. Your whole paradigm changes. Why? Because technically you do not need the paralysis to disconnect from your body. A paralysis is just a step 
that your body takes but technically you can do like what we did right now doing a meditation right away disconnecting from your body so by understanding the mechanics and doing these mechanics and applying them it builds up your belief system that you can do it and eventually you don't need them anymore and you start skipping so a lot of the mechanics i skip them right now but there's a lot of tricks like right now anthony for example you're saying that you fall asleep well there's a trick put an audio tape put an audio audio book in the background and listen to the words and use this as an anchor to make you focus you understand because that's how i actually projected the first time i was listening to an audio book and i was focused on it while my body was falling asleep and then when i when when i said uncomfortable position i'm not like I'm telling you guys to go in some weird position that's uncomfortable <laughs> When I say uncomfortable position, is just lying on your back. Because usually, I don't know about you guys, but it's not comfortable sleeping on the back. It's more comfortable sleeping on the sides. So just lying on your back, your hands on the side, your feet not crossing each other, and just remain there. And eventually, it will become uncomfortable. But it's not a super uncomfortable position. You can fall asleep. But if you're beginning and you need an anchor, you can put an audio and listen to the words really low. If you focus on these words, you're not going to fall asleep. And if you do everything that I told you in terms of not moving so that your body starts saying you need those triggers that you ignore. But there's also timing. It's like um, it's like anything. Um, there's, a, there's a peak timing where it's easier to project. And that peak timing is what I said earlier. It's the third part of the night. And this is what I do. Like I project maybe every second or third night for years now. So I've done hundreds and hundreds of projections and I do them when I, in, in the third part of the night. So basically around like four o'clock in the morning, I put my alarm and I wake up, I walk around my house, take a glass of water, then I light a candle and then I just start reading. I start reading a book or something. Um, and then maybe after 15, 20 minutes, I go back to sleep. Now, what happens is that it's a prime, it, that time is so precious because basically in order to astral project, you need a lot of melatonin in your body, like to help you astral project when you have a lot of melatonin in your body. And that's a buildup throughout the night. And cortisone, which is like adrenaline, it goes up as you go to sleep. So at around the third part of the night, your cortisone is very low in your system and your melatonin is very high in your system. Okay. Now, when this, why the third part of the night? Because because of your circadian rhythm that knows that the day kind, the daytime is coming, your circadian rhythm is creating some adrenaline into your system, a bit of adrenaline, and this is the adrenaline to help you start waking up. I'll give you a simple example. If you wake up at two o'clock in the morning and you go take some cereal, you're going to be super tired. But if you wake up at five o'clock in the morning and you take some cereal to be prepared for your day, it's going to be easier for you to stay up. Why? Because your system is creating a bit of adrenaline based on the circadian rhythm that knows that the day time is coming. And that's the third part of the night. Now, that, that hormone, that uh, adrenaline, is what's going to be helping you to stay more awakened. While the melatonin is very high, so therefore it's easier for you to fall asleep. So you see how it's like there's a sweet spot right there. Mm -hmm. So it's easier for you to stay awake because you have a bit of adrenaline that your body's creating and your melatonin is high. So then again, you can sleep. Your body's ready to sleep as well. So in that during that time, once I set up that, um, that this whole um, setup, um, I go into... Um, my back and I start doing a, a bit of visualization. Well, the first thing that I do is breath work. Why? Because the breath work, it shuts down your frontal lobe, uh, your thinking, your uh, the, the monkey mind, right? It calms it down a lot by doing some breath work, maybe like four, seven, nine, you know, four in, five, seven, hold, nine out. So I do some breath work. And after breath work, I just start focusing on an audio book, for example, in the background. So that's my anchor, right? Or I can do some visualizations with my body where I can just feel every part of my body. Or, and, then, and then I can project it outside of my body and start feeling that energetic body that's over me, hovering and feeling its legs and its hands and its face and feeling it, right? So I would do these projections. And meanwhile, my body is like, is he sleeping? Is he not sleeping? And as time goes by, it can happen within half an hour, you're going to start hitting the vibration state but it can also happen after two hours. 
one of the most incredible uh, experiences that I had in as a projection was after two hours. I literally stayed for two hours on my back like that, waiting for it. But it was worth it. And something unbelievable happened, right? So you really have got to have that will. You can't just try it or, you know what, I'll give it a shot. Uh, no, mm. you got to be excited. You got to be passionate. And you know what? Every single night for the next 50 years, I'm going to be doing it. I get a shot at this every single night mm. and be passionate and excited. And the second you do it, you get out of your body, you look at your body, you look around the room and you jump back into your body. Why? Because you want this to be a success, right? Because most of the times you get out of your body and you start walking around and then you lose connection. But you want to build some successes. So you get out, look at your room, go back in your body and celebrate. Be grateful, right? So this, and then this is slowly going to start remolding your paradigm, your reality, how you view things and your belief system. It's going to start gaining confidence. Okay, that's awesome. That's really awesome. Now, we... We've only got a couple of minutes left. We do need to close down, but any last minute questions, comments? Um, I'm yeah, I, I wanted to ask Ash. Um, Ash, when you get premonitions um, when you're sleeping, uh, is that part of the, the astro travel, the premonitions? Um, what, what, is, what is premonition, sorry? Uh, the premonitions of you, you're seeing the future and then it actually happens. Um, good question. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So, so I would say maybe I would see maybe you're tapping into the Akashic record, which is the eighth dimension, eighth perspective. So you're tapping into that. Um, but maybe that that's your clairs being activated. Maybe that's your guide showing you something. Um, I a couple of times I did get premonitions, but not often. Okay. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. And do you think um, the laying on the back, I think as humans, we to sleep on our back and look straight, which is quite can be quite comfortable, but there's a certain vulnerability with it. If you know what I'm trying to say, like because you're laying flat, you 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 there's a conscious fear of being vulnerable. So when we, we turn over, we feel that's, that's like security because we feel more comfortable yeah. because we don't feel mm. so open when we're laying straight yeah. on our back. But th that, that's just a belief system. Yeah, yeah, that's so right. It's a fear, I just, think, too. It's yeah. some, something to do with a fear of being vulnerable yeah. as well. But that's a, that's a belief. It's a belief system. So you got to dig into yeah. the source where it comes from. And if it doesn't serve you, then just uh, change it. But that's yeah. a belief system. There's nothing to fear, to be fearful about whether you're sleeping on the back or on the oh, side. Oh, no. I, when I get my premonitions, I'm sleeping, like you said, straight on my back, straight. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's maybe the spine, thing, is, yeah. the spine, the, how the spine is, is placed, how the whole body is straight, maybe that, that, that helps, I guess. Um, but mm. me too, like most of my projections are on the back. But now yeah. at this point, I can also go on my side and I can still project. But in the beginning, it was always on the back. If not, I, I wasn't yeah. able to project. I would just get blocked. It, it's a little bit too, Susanna, if, we, if we're not lying down, if we're sitting upright in our chair, like we like most of us, yeah. we're probably not going to go asleep because of our posture, but also our spine is straight and our frontal area where our chakras are, we can more freely enter in and out through those gateways. When we're on our side, that's a little bit more closed over, even physically with our arm um, crossing that midline. Yeah. Um, and I also think this is how the ancient Egyptians used to do it in their temples as well. They used to be laid down on, I call it the altar or whatever it is that they had near the sarcophagus. And then they'd go straight out with the orifice of the high priests watching over them for three and a half days at a time for the high initiates and then find out what they brought back. Yeah. So. Can I just quickly say something too? It must have been because uh, when I was, um, and thanks Ash and Roger for all your information. Um, when I was 
like, you know, around 10 years old and that I quite distinctly remember sort of flying around my room and, and doing sort of things like that. But then I've really not had anything else since, but must have been in a little bit of preparation for today. Um, a couple of nights ago, I'm sitting on the lounge watching TV and I dozed off. And then the next minute I saw my, um, it was so clear, just me, it was like I was, um, floating on top of because I'm on a, in a rural area uh, floating on top of the paddock um, and I thought oh, I'm astral traveling and then I saw so quickly sort of came back again and then I closed my eyes because I was scared you know I didn't know what I was doing I was like I, I didn't even ask for it right it just was happening and then I actually did that three times in a row. As soon as I closed my eyes and relaxed, it took me back to just hovering above the ground. And I knew I was on my property, um, and but it just kept scaring me and, and um, I kept bringing myself back in. But um, it, it sort of happened automatically. Um, I did, as I said, I, I think sometimes when I know that I'm going to be coming on and, and doing these um uh, sessions with Roger that sometimes you know I have a little preliminary thing happening and um, but uh, yeah it, it was just it was very um, now and I have had a lot of in my 30s um, um, uh, a lot of sleep paralysis that was really really scary um, and um, because I couldn't wake up and but I could hear everything going on but I couldn't move I couldn't move my you know I, I'm thinking open your eyes open your eyes and I just couldn't but then as you said uh, once I sort of settled down and started breathing I was able to sort of then open up so um, I suppose it's a little bit like um, uh, I suppose if I continued to hover <laughs> um, do you do you sort of ask you know, to be taken somewhere? Because I feel like that was a little bit of a, a glimpse into what could possibly uh, happen for me. And I felt safe, as I said, because I do a lot of protection on my property. So I sort of felt protected. Um, but I, uh, yeah, I was just um, a little bit like, oh, well, maybe if in my head, if I thought, oh, no, I want to go over to here. Would that, is that how it works? Is it like driving a car? Yeah, <laughs> you know, you go, oh, I want to go over here now and have a look, you know? Yeah. So like I said clear. earlier, yeah. So like I said earlier, the, the all is mine, right? So what would have, the best, the best time to start putting your intentions is as soon as the paralysis starts hitting. So because that's right before everything's going to start yeah. and it, when it starts, it can go in any direction. So when paralysis starts hitting, start putting your intentions. Once you're projecting, then it's obviously your mind that's guiding everything. Um, and in terms of fear, again, just have total dominion. Um, you, you, nothing can happen to because you have total dominion to the point where you can see beings and you can ask them to dance the Macarena in front of you and they will start dancing if you truly believe that they can do that. Right, okay. so, uh, like you have total dominion, and okay. I, and and this the the day the day that you overcome that you will be rewarded by by something incredible, and that's something that also happened to me. I've I've been I've been attacked by beings, and at some point I decided to reconfront them and not be fearful. And the second I reconfronted them and and I wasn't fearful, they disappeared, and my whole room physically my home physical room start became pitch black and I saw um, um, symbols going all the way infinite from top infinite from bottom all around me from top to bottom and that was exactly like the movie the matrix and I'm not oh, a movie wow. I'm not a movie I'm not a movie buff or anything um, mm -hmm. it just happened so when I saw that my whole room was just codes from top to bottom going all around me and then it just fade, slowly faded out. And then I saw the physical reality again. So it's like as if I was rewarded because I confronted these fears and I overcame them. In the same way, for example, you would have nightmares. It's the best thing ever. Why? Because it's showing you what's happening in your subconscious mind and what you need to work on. So if anything, when you fear things, confront them because they're teaching you something and that's how you're going to grow. Yeah, I think uh, fear is a very big thing for me. Um, and 
and um, yeah, and that's why I kept jumping. I, I felt like I kept jumping back into my body and, and waking up. And I was sitting on the lounge just, yeah, watching TV. And then I thought, and then I, I closed my eyes and, and it, yeah, and it just kept happening. It kept repeating itself. Um, and I suppose, uh, yeah, it was just yeah. very unusual. It's never happened to me before like that. And I think, as I said, it's, sometimes it's a little bit of a uh, preliminary of, of something that we're going to do on um, these sessions. But thank yeah. you. And I'll try and not be scared next time. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong. I mean, one last thing. When I was first projecting, I, I used to uh, have dragons next to me, and they would protect me to make me feel safe. So that was what would help me. But then what they taught me is that that's only a belief system. So at the end of the day, I'm the one that's going to be keeping myself safe through my belief system. So all of the things that mm. I put around me are just a permission slip for me to feel safe. But you don't need those modalities and processes or permission slips. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, fantastic. Now, what I will do, I just get everyone to close their eyes for a moment. Um, we have opened ourselves up energetically to everything that's out there in our big, wide physical world, and we just need to protect ourselves back down a little. So, just get everyone to close their eyes. Um, and as we're doing so, a moment of gratitude, first of all, to Ash. Um, and Ash, what you have shared has been extremely deep and enriching to myself personally and i'm sure to everyone else in the group so i really um, express my gratitude for you um having the even having the, the courage to come on here and and do what you just did so um, thank you very much and also to all of our spiritual people who have been working behind the scenes and some a little bit more directly with us as well so um, our acknowledgement to the spiritual world um, and for all that is happening behind the scenes with us and around us. Now just place your hands over your solar plexus sacral, sacral chakra area. And we'll take in a big long breath. Fill up your whole diaphragm and lungs with, with air. Hold it for a moment. Imagine your sacral chakra and your solar plexus just slowing back down to a normal size and speed to keep out um, the not so desirable energies. And on the out breath, we're just relaxing and releasing any vibration, frequencies, energy that no longer serve our higher self. So just disconnecting from everything that does not serve our higher self. And just put a little bubble of light around you. There's a lot of good vibrations in your sacred space. And we can seal all that within ourselves to a degree to allow it to work through us. Um, over the coming, or well, some of you going into your night time, into your sleep, and some of us will stay protected in our daytime as we go outside. So thank you again, Ash. It's been an absolute pleasure and an absolute gift to have you on here. All right. Thank you again, Ash, and thank you again, everybody. Thanks, everybody.